great people in WordPress, William and Aida Jackson, and they are going to be talking about the metaverse, which I think is super cool. So uh, bringing your business into the metaverse, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are so happy to be here. Now, I, I have to warn you, we're, we're called the extreme team for a reason. So I give like really bad dad <laughs> jokes, and Aida doesn't give any jokes at all. <laughs> Seriously. But um, we are so happy to have the opportunity to um, show how businesses can flourish and work in the metaverse, what's out there, give you some ideas and some, some suggestions, what you could do, some things you may experience, ideas and concepts and strategies. Um, one of the sites that we're gonna show you is Engage here, where it's a, a, like a developing site where you can create your environment, bring people in and have conferences and workshops and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. And Aida has a site that she's gonna show uh, using the Oculus. Uh, with the Oculus, you have to pair it with your computer um, because then that way you can see the information up on the screen and you can engage with it. Oh, well, we can do there, but okay. Good. But I'm also going to invite you guys to come out into the metaverse itself because some of them you need a laptop, some of them you need a VR headset, and some of them you can use just with your cell phone. So I'm going to invite you guys to come into the metaverse on your cell phone. So at the end of the session, we have three of our VR headsets, three of our Oculus. So for those of you who feel adventurous and wanna come and try it on and see the difference, because I'm gonna be honest with you, this can be kind of boring. It's a lot more fun when you're inside the actual headset itself. So with that. What do you mean I could be kind of boring? I mean, how is it <laughs> gonna be boring? Oh, you're talking about He's this silly. could be more. Oh, so oh, I'm okay. gonna right. I'm a fair warn y'all. We teach kids, okay? So we teach adults too, but the, the dad jokes, they're just gonna keep coming. Okay. Okay. So as far as um having business in the metaverse, how many of you have actually how many of you know what the metaverse is? So there are some of you, but for those of you who don't, basically what a metaverse is, it's a virtual space. And I tell people, if you have kids or teenagers or you know kids or teenagers, they've already been inside the metaverse. So how many of you have heard of Roblox, mm -hmm. Minecraft, mm -hmm. Fortnite? So all those games are in metaverse spaces, right? They are virtual spaces. They were created, they're virtual spaces, they aren't in reality. And the difference between playing a game and the metaverse spaces where we're talking about, well, there's two of them. The first one is most of them are like this. So they're looking at them in 2D, inside, on a computer, on their little switch, or whatever it is that they're playing with. And these spaces are actually created in such a way that when you have a VR headset on, and we happen to have an Oculus too, but there's others, when you have the VR headset on, you're actually immersed in the space. What that feels like is just like this. So if you, I don't know if you saw when I was up here and I had to make my little barrier because otherwise when I'm on it, I see nothing. I don't see any of you. I just see what I'm in and being in that headset, I'm actually walking in the space as if I'm walking in here. Um, a really good uh, designer can actually take pictures of this space, create the 3D objects that are in here and actually recreate the space in the metaverse and you can be walking around. Now the games that we were just talking about, those are games. So with the games, there is an objective, you have characters that were pre-made, and then you have to fill out the, finish the objective. What we're talking about when it comes to your business is you can have a space created or use pre-created spaces like this one, and it's just you. It's just you and the other person. In the, in the case of this particular app that we're gonna share with you today, this one is called Engage. They do business and they do education. So through this particular app, we are um, professional VR educators. We actually teach schools how to use VR headsets to educate students. What they have learned, um, there's a school, Morehouse College, it's a HBCU, and they actually have their chemistry class on, on Engage, they actually bring their students in. These are um, young adults that they bring into the, the chemistry class. And what the, the doctor of that particular course learned is that there's a 94% retention rate when the students are actually in 
engage. When they're actually inside the program, they remember more, and it's because they're doing more hands-on, they're fully engaged. So because, like I said, when you have that headset on, you are immersed. There are no distractions. How many of you are tired of Zoom? I am so tired of Zoom. Okay, I don't want another Zoom meeting. Now, there is a place for it, and there's a time when we need it, but this is a little different, right? So you can actually invite someone to have a meeting with you inside of a virtual space. And I'm going to show you where William and I are going to meet each other inside this um, office on one that's very similar to it. Am I ready? Yeah, here we go. Yeah. All right, so as Aida was saying, this space is creative. All right, the template is all the background. Um, as you enter into the space, just imagine you're walking into an office and you're looking around. None of this is available, none of this is there. The pictures right. are there, the walls are there, the chairs are there, the laptops aren't, the scene, isn't the scene beautiful? It's like, oh, a city with the fog and everything. But when you initially start, you have the opportunity to create what you want in this space. Uh, because of the time, I did create the WC Y'all to represent what was going on, uh, WordCamp Y'all. I did put up the American flag. Dun, 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 dun. And I also, when you walk around the space, I did put the laptops there. So there are laptops. Now, the, the awesome thing about this, and I said in my presentation, have fun with it, be creative with it, enjoy the process be, because when you are creating this you're figuring out what is the best way to make this space available to everybody to feel comfortable and obviously you're going to walk in here as an avatar so when people come into the space obviously you're getting ready for a meeting you have everything set up here's your laptop you can walk around so what's an avatar oh an avatar an avatar is a cartoon character that you make of yourself that represents yourself. Thank you. So you <laughs> create it, you design it, you build it. So whatever way you see yourself, that's how your avatar is. And when you're in this environment and you're talking and you're engaging, you're carrying on conversation, it is in your voice, but the avatar represents you. Thank you. All so right. depending on the um, app that you use, they have their own avatar. So the digital, re uh, representations of who you are. Some of them you can customize and some of them you cannot. Some of them are the way they are. Um, there is a, a space, someone here knows the name of it and all of a sudden like, I'm sorry, senior moment, just pass me. Oh, um, it is a uh, VR chat, it's VR called VR chat. chat. So there is a space that we use right now. It's owned by Microsoft, it's called mm -hmm. Allspace VR, but Allspace VR is about to go what they call sunset meaning they're closing March 10th. So a lot of us are really sad because we do a lot in all space VR, but we'll no longer be able to use that. So we've been right. testing out some other spaces and doing other things. So I did try out um, VR chat and I was in a room with um, a dinosaur and a little kid. So the dinosaur was this big and a little kitten about this big, but those were the people that were there that was their avatar. So I was having conversation with a dinosaur and a kitten. So that sounds really cute, but for me, it was like, ah, I don't know, I want this space. But it might be the one where we end up. But um, you can be a human being in that space as well. Um, in that one, you are a complete human being, meaning that you, um, your avatar looks like a person from head to toe, unless you want to be a dinosaur or a cat. Um, but others are kind of strange. So the, one of the ones that I'm going to invite you to join us in is in spatial. When spatial first started, you were half of a person. You were like just a torso, part, half a torso, no feet, no legs, just from the waist up, which I didn't like. But now they um, partnered with a company called Ready Player Me, and their own space, they, own, they have a full torso, and Ready Player Me has a full torso. So you could change out your clothes and kind of thing. That one is nice. Um, Horizons, which is Meta's own space is half a torso. So while when you create your avatar with Horizon, uh, with um, Meta, you have a full you know, outfit on. When you go into Horizon World, which is their space, you are half a person. So I can't wait for them to fix that because I 
It just feels weird. You're just floating around as half a person. Um, but I will tell you, especially if you're thinking about this for business. So let's, let me start there before we go into the space. Number one, if you are a WordPress developer and you're working on websites, when you go into the, the Oculus um, headset, I don't know the other ones because it's the only one I've used, uh, you can go onto the web, which means I can go to visit other websites while I'm on, I, not necessarily inside of Engage or, or anything, but when I'm in my headset, I can go onto the um, internet and I can go to a website. If you had on your website a way for me to get to the, into the metaverse from there, how cool would that be? I will tell you that I have met several developers that are working right now on doing v, um, AR, which is, um, this is what Meta is really fo focusing on. When I put on my headset, that I can still see the space, but in the space, anyone here play Pokemon Go? Right over there. <laughs> Someone did? Hey, yeah, see, you played Pokemon Go, see, yeah. So for those of you don't, that don't know, when you play Pokemon Go, you have your phone, and it'll, you're looking around with your phone, and it'll tell you there's a Pokemon nearby. You know what Pokemon is? It's like a little, little monster, okay? <laughs> so when you're walking around, you're with your phone, and it'll say a Pokemon is nearby, and then you look, and in your phone, you may see everything that's in front of you, but you'll see a Pokemon. And you can actually pick up a Pokemon virtually. Pikachu! <laughs> So, and that's how you collect these Pokemon. Well, the same thing is what um, Meta is working on right now, that when you have on your VR headset, you can be in your room, you can be in this space, I can see everything in this space, but I can bring in virtual digital items that are in the space with me. So what, they work, what people are working on now is that when you go to a website, if you have on the headset, things will pop off of the screen from the website, it's really cool stuff. So what does that mean for you and your business? If you're trying to sell something, just imagine you create your website and then when you go, someone goes to your website and you tell them, put on your headset, put on a VR headset and in here, on here we have these things that you can click. They can click on merchandise, they can click on to maybe if you have it connected to a metaverse space, or they could it'd just be cool, be a place that they'll want to come back to over and over again. Um, I just told them in my talk uh, yesterday, I'm waiting for the person who creates the virtual shopping cart that I can actually go shopping. See, if I could do that, like if I could do what y'all could do, like I could be a developer and I knew how to create that, I, that's what I'd be creating. That when someone puts on their headset, and they go into this shopping place, I can get out my little shopping cart and grab me some digital clothes and throw them in there and go shopping. And at the end, I can go to um, sign out and I just bought $200 worth of clothes, but I have fun shopping from the comfort of my home because <laughs> I like going on Amazon. But this way I could do it with my Oculus. These, these are some of the things that you can do. Uh, what people are actually doing right now in the metaverse, they're doing, um, virtually, surgery. So Microsoft has the HoloLens, which is a much more expensive headset than this is, about $3,000, $4,000. One is $10,000. Um, doctors are actually using that for surgery. They can take a digital scan of whatever it is that they want to do surgery on, and they can open it up. And I'm gonna show you when we go and engage how you can take a heart, and you can open it up as big as this room, and they can pinpoint exactly what they need, what it is that, the, that needs to be fixed, so that when they're on the headset and they're looking at you, they can go directly to the area that they need to focus on. And that is extraordinary what they can do in the metaverse. So Any I am going so far? to... Augmented reality, yes. So there is VR, which is where we're gonna go now, which is virtual reality. There's AR, which is augmented reality. And then there's mixed reality, where there, it's similar to um, AR. And then there's XR, which is the next thing. So I'm gonna say this. Meta right now is losing millions every month with this, trying to you know, promote this technology. And I tell you, when, when a company is willing to invest billions 
and lose millions, we need to be paying attention. Apple is about to come up with their own, they're about to come out with their own VR headset. Again, another company that's investing billions. If you know anything about the blockchain and NFT and all that other stuff, um, the, the, the California is about to put all of their titles for the cars onto the blockchain. They're making NFTs of everyone's car titles onto the blockchain. So when these are, these are major companies, we have companies and countries that are investing millions and billions of dollars into this technology. So when, I, when I'm talking to parents about their kids and they're saying, I don't know what my kids should be taking in school, this is why we're doing this because this is the future. They're already, not the future, they're doing it now, but this is what they're gonna need new people to do, more developers, more creators, more people who understand the technology, and they're gonna take it to the next level. So, yeah. so some of the blending, I'm going to escape out of here for a moment. Yep. Um, I am going to share my screen. Here you go, honey, go, go back. Right. Go back a second to where you were. Go back to where you were. The other screen where you were. Oh, yeah. This is where I was. Right here. Yeah. Hang on. Right there. Ah, I'm back. Okay. So when you're ready to tell me what it is. Ah, got it. Yep. Okay. So we're yeah, going to <laughs> we're going to blend the two. We're going to blend from where I am on the laptop to her Oculus. So that way you can see us both in the space. Okay, what is it? Uh, so at the bottom, as you see, you have a session ID. Um, if you create a separate space, you can assign a password, but we're gonna use their session ID. And the code is, ready? Yeah. Okay, lowercase z as in Zach, mm -hmm. K as in Karen, mm -hmm. capital Z as in zebra, A as in apple. Capital A? Lowercase a, uh -huh. and the number five. And number five. So right now I can't see any of you at all. <laughs> it says a password. Did you make a password? Um, Let's see if I did, it one. might be ABC. No, MC, MC, WC y'all. WC y'all? Yes. Lowercase? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's see. So why are you doing that? Let's see, let's make sure. And this is why you have to be careful when you put these things in there too. Yeah. So you have your code. So any questions while we're um, trying to get in here? Mind, mind you, I can't see you, so I'm gonna just have to listen. So let me invite you again. So you got the code. Right, yeah, same code. So are you able to get up? So you want me to start one? Yeah, start. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start a session. She's start. So while she's doing that, let me bring in. Um, so do you guys wanna go to Mars? A website. So you got two options. You can bring in a web page. So let's see if I go and type in WordCamp Birmingham. Click on the link. Uh, did it bring it up? No, it did not. Birmingham 2023. And you can access this, con this content on the web here in a meeting. Okay. All right, so you can bring all types of content into your meeting. Now this is just a website. So if I wanted to bring in a YouTube video, I can bring in a YouTube video as well. So all this is accessible through the web. So you're using three different type of applications. You're on the metaverse, even though you're using your laptop, but you're also accessing a website. So all that content is meshing together. So even if you do a workshop virtually, or even if you have a WordCamp virtually, you're able to bring in all the content that you need. Um, typically, you would have up to 50 people in a session. If you have more than 50, then you can break it up in multiple sessions. 
and then that way you can branch out that content. Now with anything, if you have multiple sessions, that there's going to be a slight time difference and um, nobody will really notice it, but you're controlling what's going on. You may notice a little time difference, but all this content is shared on this screen and you can go forth and go through the content. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm going to take you guys to an odd place, but since we already talked about it, I'm going to go ahead okay. and take you to a hospital room. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing this. And so now I'm going to invite you. Okay, so let me exit out of here. You ready for your um, for the ID? Um, let me exit out. Let me exit out of here. Close out. And session. So as we're doing this, so that you guys are not just watching us being on board, um, tell me some businesses that are out there so that we can, you ready for your? Okay. I'm going to join, not join the session. Yeah, join the session, ID. Okay, what do you have? It's three five. Three five. Capital A. Capital A. Lowercase e. Lowercase e. Capital E. Capital E. See how well we work together? All she has to do is just follow directions. <laughs> Ooh. So, okay. <laughs> okay. okay, we're entering the hospital emergency room. Now, yes. in a lot of environments, you see where it says it's downloading. So even though the content is already created, whether you're in your Oculus or in your laptop or your phone or a tablet, it has to download the information so that way you can access all the content. Now, depending on your speed of your internet and the processing speed of your digital devices, it may take a little bit. Um, as you can tell, in this application, it gives you the percentage. Aida's already in it, so it already built all the content because she's involved in it. In my case, I have to wait for it to download to my device. But okay. once it's downloaded, you're in an immersive environment where everything is, is engaging, immersive, and interactive. We can actually hear each other talk. Um, hopefully, we don't get any real bad feedback. But in a lot of these cases, um, the space is already built. Whether you do it or you, or you hire a developer or designer to build it. A lot of these are used, um, the software called Unity or where's the other one? Um, Unity and Blender. So Unity for, and Blender. Thank you. Because those are used in creating games as well. Yes. So for those parents or those of you who are interested, Unity and Blender are both free to download and to use. So if you have kids or if you yourself would like to learn how to create 3D spaces, you could just download them to your computer and learn. And they are... Um, places that you can learn, like YouTube University, <laughs> um, but there are schools and universities that are actually teaching it so that you can get a certification in it. Um, I'm telling you that there are lots of people that we have met who this is what they do. This is what they do for a living. They just create spaces. Right. They create 3D objects. They create clothing in the metaverse. Um, clothing that matches. Now, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> did you guys know that, babe, that Burberry, you know, Burberry is a a very well-known, high-priced brand. They had a fashion show in Minecraft. Did you guys know that? Yeah, they had. Um, so obviously, they had to have someone who would recreate their clothing on the on in Minecraft. They actually had regular um, avatars, but they were in a Minecraft space, and they had an actual fashion show in in Minecraft. So guys, watch out. <laughs> Oh, ready? Yeah. Oh, here we are. Yeah. Okay. okay, so when you get the hot key controls, if you're using using a laptop, it'll give you directions on what you're, what you're just like playing a game. Okay, W A S D movement the arrows. Um, on the Oculus, you already have your controls in your handset. So let me continue, and we are there in is. a hospital. Hey. So I can move around. I hear somebody calling me. So all I see Looking is the hospital down. room and William in front of me. Hey, how you doing? And above her head, Aida Jax. That's her name for in the space. And we are in this space together. How you doing, Doc? Okay, I'm going to bring in something. Let's bring something in here. 
So in this particular space, when we're doing education, we teach the kids that they can bring in if we allow them. So this is um, a 3D object, which is kind of odd. Oh, man. Oh, look, oh my go. gosh. Ah! <laughs> and these are called IFX. So IFX images are where you can bring anything into your space, and you can manipulate it, change the size. And some of them actually have sounds as well. Yes. So we're going to do Jurassic Park. In, in this the uh, room. <laughs> hey, T Rex, how are you doing? So, the IFX are very realistic. Um, once you bring them in, there's a lot of motion. When you position them to where you want them to be, you can always move them around. Um, they sometimes seem to have their own behavioral characteristics. Um, as Aida's brought in, you can bring in people, um, they're walking and moving. Um, there haven't been any um, IFX people where they can, you can actually have conversations. That's more or less where you get to the, um, the AI concepts. But in these areas, um, you just bring them in and use them as props. So some practical uses for this. Um, again, in education, there's so many. Um, we, have, we are working with um, a college right now. They have a department that's specifically for construction. And so there is, in Engage, there is a um, construction site. There are several educational places. But if you have a business, for example, what would be the, the here we go, we're going to go to the, um, I'm going to let this download. This is where William was trying to take us, um, a conference room. Now, if you are the host, just like if you're the host in Zoom, you have the wonderful option of changing from one room to another. Mm -hmm. So that way you can bring everybody with you. So even though you invite them, um, they don't have a choice. They have to travel with you. You can make multiple people the host. So if right. you want to have breakout sessions, you have the option to do that. So you have a, a lot of engagement, a lot of options where you can break off into groups. Uh, like I was saying earlier, most rooms, when you create a space, you can have up to 50 then another one is populated. So we're back into the engage room. Yeah. So one of the applications that I was speaking to someone about yesterday, they happen to be a, a lawyer and they want to teach other lawyers. Um, so you can have a courtroom, for example, and you can show the, you know, you can create a jury, you can create, now you see what, I, what just happened there? That's my barrier. That's letting me know, don't go further than that. I recommend when you're doing this, sit down. <laughs> so that you're not, um, it get, you know, because it is, it feels real. Now, I don't know who out there feels brave. If you feel brave, come on up. I'll be happy to show you what this looks like in, um, in real life. Now this, what I'm showing you here, these are the host um, options. So when, I, when we have a classroom, if you have a classroom full of people or you have a, a boardroom full of people, that you can invite them from anywhere in the world to, to come into this boardroom. They can come and they can talk, they can move around, they can interact with one another. And you can bring in these effects. So in this particular case, um, let's say I'm gonna bring in some tea. I'm just okay, bring so while she's tea doing pot. that, um, here's Aida, Aida Jack's host, uh, here's me. Now, I am very limited because I am not a host, so I can participate, but I can't really do anything. I can't change things, but it does show, you know, your speaker, what device that you're on. Yeah. Um, if there's others that are out there and you click invite, you do have a session ID where you can invite, invite multiple people. Now, even though we're in, an, in, in Engage, multiple platforms can do that too. You can invite them either by a web link or you can invite them by a code. And this keeps people from coming onto your site, being disruptive. So you know in Zoom, if you give out that link, if the wrong people get it, they can come into your Zoom unless you have them go into the, um, go into the room first before they actually get into the main area. Yeah, okay, let me. Okay, so you see what happened there? Something happened there. We have a bottle of Chante Blue Wool. 
that must mean the meetings are with you. And for those of you who like tea, we have a tea kettle that is there. Um, let's see if we can. Make I it. can't, unfortunately. I don't have the answer. <laughs> can I can pick up the bottle. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let me say this, um, and I'm going to take this off for one second. Okay. So why should because, that, like I said, I literally am in that room. I'm not in here with you guys. So I'll do this. So for for those who don't um, use this, or they're not, you're not really in involved in this. During COVID, this really grew. And you can only imagine, I'm going to tell you right now how many people are really upset about All Space VR. Because literally every Friday night, there's a party, right? And they have drinks. drinks. There's actually drinks in All Space VR that when you pick them up and you drink them, if you drink enough of them, your, your avatar gets sick. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> and it'll tell you, it warned, there's a warning. Drink as in too many drinks and you, you will get sick, right? Um, it's a way for people to connect. And so I'm a DEI teacher. I teach um, diversity, equity, and inclusion with, uh, at um, Learn Online, and I do it for the web. And when I talk about the metaverse because I want you to think about those people who are homebound. Um, one of the spaces that we've been in, there was a man that was in the space. We actually have church every Sunday morning in all space VR. So we're really sad that we now we got to find a new place for our church. And he came into the church and he told me, I'm literally right now in a hospital bed. I had a stroke and this is my only contact with people. He's like, so I love coming in here wow. and talking. So I want you to think about all the people that you want to connect with that you haven't connected with because they're not gonna come to your office or they're still scared. You know, I work um, during the day with a lot of people and a lot of people still don't want, you know, we, we have more phone calls than actual customers because a lot of people still don't want to come and meet face to face. This is still a reality. This is still a fear for a lot of people. We also have people who are neurodivergent, who feel uncomfortable in this kind of space. I happen to be one that you know, everybody's like, oh, but you're so friendly. And I'm like, you just don't know what it takes for me to come here and do this whole interacting thing with y'all. At the end of the day, he could tell you I'm done. Like this is, it takes a lot of energy for me to do this, but I want to do this, but then some people don't. But I will tell you that we meet a lot of people in the, the um, spaces who self-identify as neurodivergent and they say they love it because they can be themselves and it's okay because they're themselves, but not really themselves, right? So they can be, you know, their avatar can be that strong person they want to be, or they can dress it up any way they want, and they have an opportunity to interact. Well, people are making businesses in the metaverse, and they're interacting with people, and they're inviting them to come and use their services. So if you're a coach, so that's a great way that if you can't meet with your person face to face, you could create a space. This, um, this is, oh, we went to Mars, okay. <laughs> um, you could create a space and, and let them sit and talk with you. You can go into a virtual cafe and have a conversation with them. Um, I'm just, if you guys tell me some of the businesses that you have, it'd be easier for me to figure out ways that you could use it rather than me off the top of my head, because I'm thinking, I know for a fact that they are coaches, that I know that there are um, people who create clothing in the metaverse and they're selling them. Uh, one of the young men in um, All Space VR, his whole company is about to do a pivot. I don't know what he's gonna do. He creates clothing in All Space VR for the All Space VR avatars and people purchase them and he uses a portion of that money to support his local community. And he has parties once a week where everyone comes wearing his clothing and he shows videos of what he did with the money that they've just donated by purchasing those, um, those uh, avatar clothes. So he's had, um, he sent people to college. He has helped local moms, you know, buy groceries. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use this for philanthropy, but there's also ways that you can use this to make money. Exactly. So as I 
zoom around and browse around and show you some of the possibilities, you be a, as creative and innovative as possible. So who wants to go into the metaverse? Anybody? Besides the VR. I'm going to show you the other space in a second. You had a question? Yeah. Okay. So the question was, okay, yeah, yeah. So the question was, um, she's interested in creating an online conference for homeschoolers, right? So she wants to know, can I create an online conference and then have vendors come in and they bring their materials and those kinds of things, right? Okay, so it's not quite set up for that just yet, but the online conference portion, absolutely. So this is just one room. And as William mentioned earlier, each room can hold up to 50 people. But if you have more than 50, it goes into an overflow room. So the overflow room looks identical to the room that you're in, and 50 more people can go in there. So in this particular program and Engage, if you have an enterprise um, account, I think you can do up to 350 people, meaning that it'll just repeat the room over and over until all the rooms are full. What happens when you have 50 people, and the same thing happens in all space VR, is that I see the same thing everyone else sees, I just may not see the first 50 people. I'll see the 50 people that are on the server that came on with me with the next 50 people. So it goes into different servers. So the first 50 will see each other, and then the next 50 will see the 50 that are in that room, and so on and so on. Does that make sense? So my recommendation is if you wanna do a conference, after, absolutely do a conference, but then that's where you guys come in, right? So make sure there's websites. You can link out to a website. You can link out to a space. So for example, um, if for, uh, let's say for your homeschoolers, um, there's a space, I know for homeschoolers sometimes there's a local space where everyone can come and teach classes together. So you can have a 360 camera that actually shows the space. And in this particular program, I could take you on a field trip. So thank you, welcome, thank you for coming. So there's a space downtown where you guys can join in and we can teach all the kids in one room to teach them something, whatever it is. Um, let's go take a look at it and invite them for a field trip. They all come virtually and they can do that with their laptop or if they have the headset, you go virtually into that space and then it's a 360 degree view if you did it with the 360 camera that they can actually walk in and look in and look around. So yes, you can have a conference. Maybe the, the, the vendors can't show materials, but if you know a developer or you know someone who um, knows how to create 3D objects, they can have branded materials in there, but then invite them to come to the website afterwards to see what it is that you're trying to share. Okay. Any other questions? So any brave takers? Anyone want to look in here? No, nobody. You do? Come on. All right, so while he's doing it, I'm going to take you into another space, just randomly picking some places. Um, one of the good things about these, as we mentioned before, you can create it and design it depending on your theme or depending on what you're trying to do. And obviously with anything, whether you're a teacher or a business owner, you go in ahead of time and you set the space up. There is a way to record yourself giving a presentation within the space so you can record it already ahead of time. But there's also a space where you can create a snapshot. That means you build the space, you take a snapshot, a snapshot of it so you can bring it in at a later time and you and the other people that you invite can be engaged in the space. So now I've created this space. So now I can come in here. Um, if you're doing like industrial education or you're doing a business related to some type of industry and you need spaces to house things for demonstration purposes, 
you have a warehouse system or you have lockers or you have storage that you can come in here and have conversations about whatever it is that you okay. want to do. And yeah. it gives the environment you like and space? it gives a picture of, hey, you like space? I'm bringing people in here. Do you like we're space? We're going to hold a meeting. Yeah. Oh, great. And we're good to go. You know, like this then. All right. So come into this, this space right here. Stand here. So which one did you do there? I'm doing it. I'm taking them to the um, International Space Station. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. There you go. I got a glowing hand. Okay. 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 So what do you see right now? Well, I see training, missions, and explorers. Okay. Try training. Here, hit this button. Right button, trigger. Right here. Okay. I got directions here on how to. Mm hmm. I'll tell you how to move around. All right. Press any button to continue. Oh, my goodness. Press this. And then to move forward. Mm hmm. What do I move forward? Use the. Um, one of them is going to make you turn, and one is going to go forward. So while the he's little in joystick space, in front of you. Yeah. Okay. So he's actually on the International Space Station right now. I can see floating wrenches and stuff. And if I want to move forward, you think I'm. Well, yeah. One of those will help you move forward. One of the little. There you go. And one will turn. They don't seem to be doing anything to me. Okay. Try the try the trigger. You're in art space. Oh, and when I do that, I get a little, little uh, uh, tablet to say help me. Okay. Move around. But it doesn't. Oh. Yeah, one one will turn you. There you go. Oh, I see. Yeah, there you go. One turns you and one moves you forward. Okay. Now make sure you keep your head up because if you keep looking down, you're going to go through the space station. You'll be in outer space. Oh. <laughs> This, yeah. this is vertigo, man. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm right behind you. Oh, oh. Ah. Okay. So which space is he in over there? Right. He's in the in the space station right now. On which one? Engage yeah. or in uh, no, just the into the ISS. Okay. Uh, so in the space station, for those of you who want to help your kids learn about space, um, if you happen to have the, the headset. Uh, there is one for the ISS, and you can go into the space station, and you can go on actual missions, including um, connecting the, the arm that's up there with the module and all that. It, it shows you the cupola, where you can go into the cupola, and you can see out of space, and you can actually do a spacewalk and go out into space. Oh, this, is, this is very impressive. Now, we'll do, we'll do a comparison. This, this is not bad. So are they but seeing on the screen what I'm seeing? They're not. Mm -mm. Oh, my goodness. This is a comparison. Yeah. So we are going to watch live the International Space Station. Yeah, so what he's seeing is what you ready. see here. So they actually do have videos of the astronauts doing work on the International Space Station. They wave at you and everything. Um, and he can, what he sees is what you see here. That's what it looks like inside the headset right now for him. But he's actually in the space station. Right. So he sees things floating around. He's floating around. He's, uh, he's moving. And yeah. Right. Out of space. <laughs> and your body is hanging out of space here. <laughs> yeah. So the cool thing about this is if you look down here, it's February 5th, the time. Um, the speed is 27,566 kilometers per hour, but that is mm -hmm. 17,500 miles per hour in space. It feels like I'm standing still. <laughs> yeah. So if you've never used a headset before, we normally do this sitting down. Because, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's very... Because, again, like I said, he doesn't see anything. and uh, He doesn't see any of you. He's actually immersed in the space. So future engineers and scientists and people that may yeah. go into space, like let me just get this Mr. Logan here. over there. Fantastic. If you ever have to do a it's report good. on You're space welcome. or the International Space Station, this is a live feed. So you know, YouTube, International Space Station Live, you get a live feed. 
But like Aida was saying, in the Oculus, you're an astronaut in space. Nothing below you is all space around you. So I promised you we're going to take you into the metaverse and we're going to join you in a space. So if you go into your phone, if you want, or you could do it on your laptop, the space is spatial, S-P-A-T-I-A-L dot I-O. So let's start from the beginning. And if you're already on the blockchain and you have a wallet, you can join in with your wallet. Or if you're not, you can just join in with your email. We got a couple of minutes left. Huh? We got a couple of minutes left. Okay. So if you go in there, did I bring my? And it will probably ask you to create. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Create an avatar. So I'm gonna join you in spatial. Are you? And why I just want to see that, which is the which are the. Um, um, on our spaces that we've created. Um, these are several spaces that we've created in relation yeah. to WordCamps. So WordCamp in Tebe, which is in a couple of months, this is their space. Uh, WordCamp Sevilla, which is so in Spain. Oh. WordCamp San Jose. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So to answer your question, we actually, uh, he, William created these galleries in um, spatial for the WordCamps. And when, right before we went to work camp uh, Costa Rica, um, about six or seven of the organizers joined us in their spatial gallery in Costa, from Costa Rica. So this is in Tebe. So this is a size spatial. So for example, if you have um, friends that are artists or you work with artists, you build websites for artists, this is an amazing space. First of all, spatial just started um, creating so that um, mm -hmm. allowed it so that you can create your own spaces in spatial. You don't have to just use their spaces. You can build in here. Right. Um, but as an artist, I can tell you, I create actual art, um, you know, live art and NFT art. And it's so expensive to rent a space to have a showing. Spatial is free. All I have to do is upload my pictures and I can create a gallery of my work and people can see my work. And if they have the headset, it's like being in an actual museum and looking at the work as big as I want to make it or as small as I want to make it. And it's, a, right. it's like they're standing right there. And it didn't cost me anything. And that's an add-on. If you are building a website for an artist, you can show them how they can do that. You can show them how they can create a space virtually. It doesn't cost them anything. But this space is we're open to anyone who wants to go into the space at any time. So if you went into spatial.io, when you open up spatial, and you're, if you're on your laptop or your um, website, it should have spaces. So we can join each other in the spatial park. So we can see if it'll allow us to, yeah. And these are the way conferences are moving too. So everybody can participate as in real life yeah. or also in an environment like this. So, um, I am going to see how can right. I invite um, y'all. Because of time, we are going to wrap it up. But I'll but tell yeah. you what, if you want to continue to go on with AIDA yeah. and Spatial, you'll be happy to. I can do it as well on my laptop. But thank you, and hopefully we share some valuable information. And as always, you can ask us questions. <laughs>